my name is Andy Field. I'm an artist who usually works in live performance and I have been working with Martin Kerners and the Playful University Club. Uh, together Martin and I uh, have been looking at how to um, enhance the uh, levels of play within the university environment, within academic life in general, and uh, through play to create a greater sense of uh, com compassion and joy in, uh, in university life. I'm uh, Ma Marta Kooners. Um, I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Exeter at the medical school and I teach uh, physiology for medicine and biosciences. And um, I started to get to in, in the topic of playful learning a couple of years ago when I got interested in gamification in education and I met some people and then I was combined my passion of how the human body works, the biology with playful learning to uh, do some research on the biology of play and what happens with the body and they asked me to give a lecture but then I gave a workshop uh, because I wanted to experience with people what playful learning actually feels like and what it does and from there I applied for an uh, uh, education incubator um, uh, the playful university club so that's where I established the playful university club to really look into the top topic in more depth but also experience it uh, with a group of people in the university so from gamification all the way to just turning on some music in a lecture or what what's the future of the lecture and uh, yeah that's that, that that's where uh, Andy, Andy Field uh, came in with, with, with thinking about and, 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 and being creative about the, the, the lecture and, and playfulness. And so at the moment at which I joined the Playful University Club, we were beginning a completely new adventure and a completely new challenge, which is how do you disrupt these online spaces, these somewhat deadening online spaces, and um, create within them little pockets of opportunity for spontaneity and human encounter and joy. And uh, that's something that, you know, both Martin and I were starting at from essentially nothing together. And that sort of really um, became the sort of foundation of the journey that we went on through the fellowship. We started to meet regularly and we had these conversations about uh, education and how serious it can be and how you can make s small tweaks about it uh, to make it more playful and, and um, those were actually always very unexpected conversations we always came new ideas uh, every conversation I had with him we, we came up with new ideas uh, that I actually could implement on the day sometimes one of the more substantial or sort of tangible outcomes of the, the dialogue that, that Martin and I were having was this project uh, that I created called the Lecture for Nobody. And the idea behind that, le that, that project was to create a space to reflect on what the meaning and value and efficacy of a lecture is in this time of uh, digital learning. And, and whether that, that our understanding of those things has been changed forever by the last year and a half in which all lectures have been online, in which uh, you know, a lot of learning has happened via video. Um, and what we wanted to do was by creating these, uh, these virtual lectures uh, to ask the question, what is the value of, of, a, of a gathering of people to, to sit in silence in a, in a room and listen together to someone share their expertise. Does that still have value? And is that value more than simply the information that that person is imparting? Uh, what the lecture for nobody was, uh, was exactly that. It was a lecture that was for no one or no, no one in particular. It was uh, in an empty lecture theater. It was a, it was a, a virtual lecture, so it was a sort of 30 minutes of uh, pre-recorded sound and video that constituted a kind of uh, sort of an, uh, an artist's impression of what a lecture might be, sort of maybe slightly playful and disrupted. And then into that space of this, this empty lecture theatre and this, this lecture playing in it, 
uh, we invited one student uh, to be the designated note taker. And so I suppose you could think of it also as a as a one-to-one -one performance, a performance that I've created for one student to experience and uh, a space for them to reflect on, um, I suppose, their experience of the last 18 months and also on their relationship to, to buildings like that, to the, to the big kind of auditoriums, normally full of people, but now full of really just them on their own. Um, and uh, to think about what those spaces mean to them and to respond through sort of taking, taking notes. And those notes that the, the students wrote, they become the only legacy of the project. It's only documentation. So the, the lecture disappears and no one else will ever hear it. And all we have left is the, the notes that these students have taken uh, that can then be shared with everybody else. The lecture for nobody, which uh, I found was was hilarious, but also made me think very deeply uh, about what it is actually a lecture and what where does it go. Uh, especially with the COVID, the online uh, lectures are typically watched 1.5 speed, uh, and uh, <laughs> that was that was a revelation for me when I was talking about my students about these uh, about this topic about where does the lecture go to, and that came from him, and that. Um, seep through my daily practice and how I, I do my lectures and how I talk with, with students. And we, we were both very keen to keep on collaborating and actually keeping it on the having meetings without an agenda kind of thing because that, that is really stimulating for both of us for him to, to hear about what's, what's in the, going on in the academia and uh, for me to to just bounce off ideas and, and, and uh, he's, he's definitely gonna, we're definitely gonna continue, uh, especially uh, with all the changes that are going on in education with, uh, with uh, the COVID pandemic and the need, for, um, the need for joy in education and compassion and um, uh, connectivity is, is, is never been this high in my, in my experience. Uh, so that's, and, and we're both very passionate about that. But my main experience of the fellowship was just having the opportunity to um, sort of stop once a week or once a fortnight and just have an hour of just chatting with, a, with someone who is so interesting, shares a lot of the same cares and concerns as I do, but, uh, but, but comes at them from, from, you know, from a very different place professionally and personally. It's not a one-off, it is something that fit in the world and that, that, that really ties into my values around play that I believe that it's, it's a, a, um, a part of human existence is play. It's not something you can just get rid of, it's, it's part of it. And, and, and yeah, that's, that's something that, that I experienced with, uh, with collaborating with Andy.